new age challenges confronting leaders in this fast-paced world. What do you think is something novel uh, that they have to deal with? I think there's a lot of, um, of, of, of topics there. Let me just first say that I'm so, I'm so pleased that James mentioned actually listening to people and relating. That That's one of the really big things because what we really need in leadership is that emotional intelligence piece. And that is one of the things that we need more and more because the emotional intelligence is really what enables people to connect with those who they are leading. Leading is a uh, voluntary thing. You can't just, you know, demand that people follow you. So um, also you mentioned earlier on in your introduction that we live in a fast changing world, there's increase in complexity, people are interconnected, everything is uh, moving faster, technological change, is, change is, is moving more rapidly than ever. And so we live in this VUCA world. So this VUCA world word is obviously a buzzword that we're using now with everything is more um, co complex as well. So uh, leaders need to adapt, first of all, in this world. Mm. And um, there are many things that come with that, being able to set the vision. So first of all, where are we going? And the vision is not just set in stone and either demanding that the team follow that vision because things are interchangeable. And what it means for leaders is we can't rely on one person, a leader, having all the answers. It is not possible anymore because we live in this VUCA world. Right. More than ever before, we need to empower the team, to rely on the team, draw them in, to build build the journey together, because together we may have the answers. Right. Uh, and Mrs. Suzanne, we're going to talk about that in greater depth, but something that you mentioned here while you agreed with Professor James was that a certain degree of emotional intelligence is required in a good leader. Now, I want your opinion on this and Professor James' opinion on this as well. Traditionally, leadership uh, in all sorts of forms has been seen as a masculine role. It requires a sort of aggressiveness. That's why when we would hear about these stereotypical arguments that women can be good leaders, it would always be this uh, thing coming that they're too emotional, they will uh, show too much empathy, and you need an aggressive stance. What's your take on that? Well, I love the view of leadership being a combination of yin and yang. So the yin is the supportive feminine element and the yang is the challenging masculine element. And we very much need both in order to be effective leaders. So you said before those uh, masculine men we think of as being the good leaders, but what do they do? They challenge, they, challenge, they set the standard, they demand that people get to a certain level. Yes, we need that, but we also need the supportive element. This is where the more the feminine side comes in. So we're helping our team members or whoever we are leading to reach that very challenging level. Hmm. And this is where the listening comes in, where the empathy comes in. So I like, and we need lots of both, lots of challenge. How are we gonna get better? How are we gonna get there? And lots of support. What can I do as a leader to help you achieve that vision? So the combination of the two are